Welcome back, everyone. Going into the fourth and final hour here of week 49. Adam, what's up? Yeah, week 49. Seems like something huge is going to happen next week. I don't know. So anyway, uh, Eric... <laughs> <laughs> Eric and Kia. Stop watching now. You can just catch him on the bot. <laughs> Eric and Kia, come back. Uh, you come back to the ship. So there's something very important that happens as soon as Eric gets back. Yeah. He walks in the door, sniffs, says, is somebody cooking bacon? <laughs> Nobody told me we had bacon. Nobody told me we could cook. <laughs> Who wants Ludafisk? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, everybody's in the um, uh, in the room uh, in the the mess hall. So, the two of you, I guess, go there. Yeah. Okay. So, when you return, you find Alfarius uh, reading the digital newspaper and um, <laughs> pigs uh, polishing off the rest of some bacon on a plate. Nice. Cameron is taking hanging up an apron. Uh, on the wall when you walk in. Nice. Maybe I would even, maybe actually Kia would say, Eric, you probably have some things to tell the crew. If you don't mind, I'd like to excuse myself. And, and I never got a chance to study this journal and I still feel like it could hold some answers. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll find a private place where I can, I just go to the cargo hold. Okay. Sure. Yeah, so I guess I just kind of like sit down and I say, well, Professor Yamamoto was very helpful. She found my theories very interesting and was very forthcoming with information. She seems to think that it's entirely plausible that we have some sort of quantum psych psychic entanglement that's connecting two universes and two people um, in order to generate the power necessary to disentangle the universes, we're going to need a lot more of these. And I just pull out the crystal that I had in my bag and I, you know, place it on the table. The only place we can find a sufficient quantity of them is Kamna, which I should be able to get us there as a citizen of Hoveda. But there is a complicating factor. She said that we are being pursued by two members of the Mubari Zun, which we already knew from our talks with Rajani. I thought maybe they were off our trail, but it sounds like they asked her about me specifically. So we have some trouble coming for us. I just nod and need another piece of bacon. <laughs> so I, uh... if, if we want to try and disentangle Piani and Kia, Kamna is the right place to go. I have to say though, there are two competing theories about metadimensional entanglement. Gordon's theory suggests that it's simply that Kia has been brought into this universe and Piani is left in another. The two universes are entangled and there's an epicenter from which ripples are spreading outwards where the universes are changing as a result of the entanglement. In Gordon's theory, if we reverse the entanglement, then there may be some violence as the universes revert to normal, but both of the entangled parties will revert to their proper location. But there's also Vaslav's theory, which states that the entangled parties will mutually self-destruct. It's never been tested. What was the name of the first one? Gordon. Let's hope Gordon's rat. <laughs> it's like another piece of bacon. Captain, I need to run an errand of the greatest importance. May I be gone for a little bit, like an hour or two? Uh, here on this moon, you mean? Yes. Yeah, take a take a pie bot with you. Uh, yes, thank you. And I just uh, go grab my rifle and leave. Okay, where are you headed? The police station. <laughs> I'm gonna be gone for an hour. Where are you going? Police station. What are you bringing? My gun. Oh my God. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So you uh, you go to your room and grab your rifle and and yep. get it. Okay. And like a some kind of trench jacket. In fact, I don't think a Ferris even owns one. So he looks through like I guess he's in Sakarian's old room or something like that. So he just grabs one of his old ones. Okay. Sure. 
Yeah, so you, you throw on a, a long coat and, uh, and head out. Okay, sure. So we, we, cut to, uh, we cut to you getting out of a car outside of the, the little like, transit police station uh, where you were before. And uh, yeah, you, you walk up. <laughs> do, you, do you have like aviators on and holding like a box of roses? Uh, <laughs> no, I have. Uh, well, Sarah Connor. <laughs> the rifle's like under my arm and under the jacket. And the robots, I guess, behind me as well. And uh, I just like, I, I just as I step out of the car, the space Uber, I just like dial in to the to my contact, the fellow Indonian. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, uh, it's a, uh, I'm here. I need to talk to you, Alfarius. Okay. All right. Uh, sure. Yeah. His name is uh, Officer Asuni. Um, and uh, yeah, he, uh, I said, he says, uh, I'll, um, yeah, I'll meet you. Uh, uh, meet you by the front desk. Okay. You get it back right away. So I go walking over. Yeah, there? you walk in. Um, and uh, yeah, as soon as he is, uh, he's got a coffee cup in one hand and he's talking to um, talking to a, a like a desk officer. Uh, and he, he sees you and he, he greets you in Swahili. And uh, yeah, he says, uh, Alfarius, what can I do for you? Hello. Um... Look, I tried to do this the correct way, but the person that has the proper paperwork has been abducted, and we are being pursued by two lethal agents. I need my pistol back. Okay. Do you, do you have your shotgun on you in like some clear and obvious way? No, uh, I have my under, rifle on me, but it's under. That's what I mean. Yeah, you're right. It's under the would, he, would he be able to see it? No, it's no no threatening. I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, I was I was less concerned with that and more about like oh, why, you, why you need your pistol? You got a huge gun right there, but um okay yeah so he uh so he's like um uh of, of course uh i mean it's been a it's been a strange day for a strange couple of days for planetary security uh, we've had terrorist threats six or seven times uh, there's rumors someone was shooting up the plaza the other day i I'm, i don't have the time for putting you through the bureaucratic rope. So yeah, come, come with me. I'll get it out of the, uh, out of the evidence open for you. I look at the pie bar or the, the brookie and say, wait here. And then I yeah, it just <laughs> salutes you and like goes into like alert mode. And so, um, so officer, as soon as he leads you into the, uh, into the back and uh, before, just before you go into the, the evidence room, he, he looks at you and he, uh, it's like, did you get the message I sent you? I did. Thank you for sharing that with me. Things are coming to a head. I, uh, I think that we're going to be moving soon. I'm putting my resignation in tomorrow. You're Will going you back then? He, he nods. Like I am. I have to. There are things happening there that need to be dealt with. More important things than working here. You know what brought upon the apocalypse of our homeworld, right? I've heard rumors. There are those who say it was an artificial intelligence. They blame the Kabrilis because of their actions now on the planet. Say they're trying to seize control, that there's something buried there that they want. But I heard rumors it was a Photonhauer ship. All I know is that Andoni needs us. From what I understand with my contacts, it was an artificial intelligence and it was a Photonhauer ship people that I have gotten close to have some connection to it. I'm not sure what it is yet, but I'm working this angle because nothing else is of near as much importance. Andoni must be avenged. He nods. I agree. And you say you have some information about this. You're pursuing it on your own? Yeah. That's pretty much how I've been doing things since it all happened anyways, but with your yeah. contact, it's given me great hope that perhaps there is others like us that could work together. Yeah, I think he, he sighs when you when you say that, and he's like, um, yes, loneliness is a feeling I think we all understand. I lost family on Andoni too. And he, he kind of like looks at you and he shakes his head and he says, um, but your loss is greater. I hope that whatever path you take, brother, it leads you to answers. I have I to return like home. I understand. Please remain in contact with me. As I said, I, 
I uh, want that information and appreciate you giving it to me. He, uh, yeah, he nods uh, and he says, um, someday, someday we will repair the damage that was done to our world. But for now, we have to keep hold of it. If not repair it, then at least wash it with the blood of those that made this happen. Yeah, and he, he kind of looks at you like, all right, you, you are dedicated. And, uh, and he says, um, we all seek peace in our own way. It sounds like you need your guns back. And he like hits, hits the keypad and the door slides open. Uh, and he, he takes you into the like uh, the um, uh, evidence lockers and he, he goes to find your uh, find your weapon for you and, um, and he puts the puts the pistol in your hand and uh, and he says um, he says I hope you put it to good use that's the plan thank you very much comrade I like warrior grip him or some shit yeah yeah totally okay cool all right um so meanwhile back on the swan song um i think that he uh, you said you were you were taking a look at piani's right stuff okay right. so gosh it's it's surreal to to read because it's kind of like i don't know if, if this is is something you've done as like as an adult but um like it's like reading something you wrote when you were a teenager you recognize your own voice in it, but it's like someone else wrote it. You're like, I recognize these things. Like I, I get like you, you kind of, you don't remember writing it, but you have that same feeling of like, Oh yeah. Okay. This is a thing I could have written. Um, and so by that, by that merit, it's more and more distressing the further into it you get. Like it's obvious that this, this Piani person, you know, was troubled by these visions. And like, if only they had, like you had someone like Brother Butler or the church in their life, maybe, you know, maybe it wouldn't have been so stressful. Maybe they could have talked to someone, but you also get this sense of like intense isolation, right? That they like, their, their closest friend was a computer and like everyone around them was hostile and strange. And like, you feel a sense of, like, I think it's a good kind of emotional segue from the last scene that you feel a sense of like loneliness, right? Where you're like, oh, this person must have been like, just so alone um and so i think that like reading it is is hard like it's hard for you because you identify with it if not the words but there's something about the voice that makes you feel like lonely and, and kind of estranged do i ever see or find any mention of like seeing myself yeah 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 i mean you definitely you definitely recognize your own name uh and uh but you're you're seen in these these visions as a kind of like strange, distant angel, right? Like you're a ghost moving through the background. Your like your dreams were clear and terrifying, but her visions seem to just come up on her out of nowhere, right? In the middle of a conversation or like walking through the through the, the, the room, right? And so there's this this definite sense of like you had dreams, but she had like real, like hit you over the head visions. Uh, and some of them were of you and of a, a very intense clarity. Um, and uh, let's see if there's anything else. I think that was like the two most important parts. I think in, in sort of experiencing all of that, um, maybe that uh, makes like the drive to try to figure out what this all means. Um, you know, he has thought several times that like, there's an element of saving here. Like this might be my responsibility to save them. Mm -hmm. And maybe this is like, maybe my responsibility is to save this Piani. Yeah. Well, like redemption, redemption's a big thread that runs through all of the new prophets stuff, right? Like the sector is a, a sinful graveyard, right? It's a, it's a bad place full of bad people. And the new prophet just wants to redeem everyone and wants to give everybody their chance at heaven. And the worse the people that the worse the people are, the the more hard work you have to do to like bring them into God's light. And reading this stuff and the things you've experienced in the last twelve hours, these fucking these people need Jesus. Like they, right, they exactly, exactly. Um, so knowing Higgs's opinion on everything, that sort of what I walk out of that research session with. 
is that like more than ever, I need to comply, not because I'm surrendering, but because it is actually my duty to help these people. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily how they think they need help, but how Kia of thinks. Course. They need help. <laughs> yeah, the way that religious people typically think that they should help people. They're right. Right. Yeah, but that's right. that's the sense. You're like they they're 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 unclear they're wandering around committing sins doing bad shit and and they just they just need some guidance they need somebody to like help them find their way and if you can get some answers in the middle of that then you know good for you but yeah cool Space jesus so you uh yeah you you finish reading that um and uh maybe that prompts me to actually go to eric Okay, sure. And I don't know if they're still in the mess hall. Yeah, where is Eric when when Kia comes to find him? I guess um, like with uh, God, Sicarian with Alfarius gone and Sicarius, Alfarian, yeah, Sicarian. Oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna merge everybody's characters into everybody else. So. Right. Yep. Eric well, that's kind of what we're going for is like the unified timeline where every player is just one character. Right. That's that's the secret reveal is that everyone but me is leaving the show and I'm just going to play everybody all at once. <laughs> I feel like people would watch that. Four uh, hours of me doing stupid voices. Uh, yeah. So like, you know, Eric said what he needed to say. He's probably actually like in the engine room, like lifting up an engine with one psychic power and like, you know, screwing in bolts with a second one or something like that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you know, if you go like crawling the ship to find me, Kia, you eventually find me underneath some engine block, you know, okay. tweaking the spike drive. Well, I'm actually hoping to find the, the, you know, that I find Eric sort of alone. Yep. Um, obviously, it's if you haven't figured it out, Alfarius and Eric are the ones that she likes to deal with. Seems uh, that way. Uh, so maybe she goes to Eric and. There's almost an air of acceptance about her now, mm -hmm. where it's like, Eric, after extensive studies, whatever we need to do, I'm committed to, to do that. That's, that's great. <laughs> As the, the engine settles back into its moorings, and he wheels himself out from under it. He's got like a big oil smudge across his face, and you know his hands all dirty. He gets up, wipes them on a cloth attached to his belt or whatever. He says, "Well, um, okay. I guess we should try to get to Kamna. You don't. You've never here." Um, have a seat. And like, he sort of like pulls over a stool or something like that. And then he pulls over his own stool. Um, and he fires up like an app on his, uh, on his data pad. And he starts taking Kia through like the first pass test for MES, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. have you ever, have you ever heard of the, you know, the Godwin Steve? It's, that's the, it's the Venkman test, right? The, the, yeah, the Venkman I, test. Have you ever performing the Venkman basic psychic presence test? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just um, without the electrocution, that comes. That's a secondary. That's, that's second phase. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's it's not something you're ever you're familiar with, is it, Kia? I mean, these, you give these tests to like three year olds, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like you got to test them early. So. I mean, in some point, right? MES is common enough that I've probably taken this test and not well, done every. It. Yeah, every kid in every like civilized. Right. Like checked in system has to undergo the test, but like, you don't really, you vaguely remember your like mom and dad taking you to somewhere to like get this test done. Um, and then a sense afterwards of like your, your mom being like relieved and your dad being kind of like disappointed. Okay. But you right. don't really know, you don't remember at all the, the like relevance of the test. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. So you know, like uh, I, I take you through it, and it's like 15 minutes, and like it, it's entirely inconclusive. As yeah, well. like I already know the results of my test, so I kind of humor Eric in this. Yeah. Um, okay, I just thought I would check. Um, it's it's possible that there could be something we could try using one of these crystals, but. I think really we need to go to Kamna in order to have any serious results. Would you like to give something a try with me? 
I'm assuming you are doing this because of my connection with Piani, but if it makes you feel better, Eric, yes. Whatever you wish. Okay. And I go like, stay here. And I like run to my room, mm-hmm. pull out one of the crystals from my, my backpack and I run back. Okay. I sit down and I, uh, well, I say, wait, um, wait, hold on. We should do this in my room. <laughs> and then I, I, I like pull you to my room. So um, when you go to Eric's room, you notice that like one of the walls, all the paneling is like brand new and the rest of the walls are all kind of like dirty and like older. There's like a yeah. big section of the wall that's recently been replaced. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and like, I, I like flip out my workstation and I, I like set up one of my, uh, what do I have? I've got, um, I set up one of my Insta panels mm-hmm. and I like cordon off a section of my room. And I like, um, I think like I, I, I position um, Kia on one side of the Insta panel on the other side of it from me. And I'm on the other side holding the crystal. Mm-hmm. And then I, I say, Kia, this may be slightly dangerous, but I've, I've set up this panel to protect you in the event of any unfortunate circumstances. <laughs> it's, it's like going, it's like going to like the dentist or something, and the dental technician puts on this huge lead suit, and you're like, but what? Yeah. You're like, you're fine. You don't, you don't need that. It's actually that I put the lead thing on her, and I didn't yeah. put it on me. I'm like, this should protect you in case anything goes wrong. Um, and then what I do is um, I, I like push my psychic mind into the crystal, mm-hmm. but instead of focusing on teleportation or telekinesis, I focus on metapsionics. And I'm trying to like expand my mental presence and reach out towards the mental presence that is Kia, or yeah. if there's anything about her that reminds me of the time that I did this with Piani, um, and specifically, I'm trying to like push through the crystal because it has psychic resonance in order to see if I can amplify yeah, dude. my metapsionics. I feel you. You're, you're, reaching out, you're reaching out with your psychic powers. Okay. Yep. Well, make a mental effect save, please. Uh huh. All right. Here it goes. Crossing my fingers. That's a fail. Okay. Damn. So, so you try to clear your mind and you have all these like things that you do to prepare you like meditation tricks and like things you do to prepare you like count back from 10 and like you have to clear your mind to make it an empty plane for something else to occupy right you have to clear the space yeah. but something near the end of that process you're like three two and then you start thinking about your mom like you're like you've you remember you like this anticipation or this kind of like nervousness seeps in where you're like oh i hope that sigrid's okay yeah. and in the facets of the crystal we we see first of all like the reflection of your face and then we also see kind of on the other side like the reflection of of kia mm-hmm. and then there's like a, a flash like a um uh like a bright flash of light and we see uh we see your your home world. we see sigrid um but instead of the like wooden long ho- houses and like the the ships of your of your people we see these huge basalt like columns these like obviously artificially they seem like pulled up out of the earth these mm. sort of towers and there are like ships coming and going from the towers uh, maybe like a giant kind of like spider looking like robot thing like moves by and, and we see it yeah, kind of and uh and i we follow that these things and we see uh, this like hulking figure. It's like huge and like broad. The shoulders. There's kind of like a furry like mantle that it's wearing. And it's holding a, like holding an axe. And it seems to be like standing guard over the doorway. Mm. And, as, and Eric is seeing this. Like we, we keep flashing back to Eric. Like you're you're like gripping the table and there's like sweat beating on your forehead yeah. as this pouring into your head. And we pan across this thing. And as it gets closer, the, the sort of spider moves past it. Um, we see that it's Eric. Uh, and you're uh, you're like holding this like huge carbon fiber axe, and both your eyes have been replaced with these big like green uh, like ocular lenses, and part of your face has a big gash in it. We can see your metal teeth underneath. Yeah. Um, and then you like snap out of that vision and like pull yourself back, and the crystal uh, falls to the table. It was like yeah. in front of you, like clatters to the table. And Kia, from your perspective, you see uh, Eric. Uh, like watch this crystal rise up and then like 
pull back and then you just hear like a, a glass sort of like clattering sound. Mm -hmm. well, As Higgs drops his whiskey. <laughs> I mean, it, it's startling, I assume. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe you don't, you didn't know what to expect, right? He was like, I'm going to do some psychic stuff. And then. Right. I mean, I, I don't like, not the terror pushback, but sort of like maybe surprise. Um, yeah, Eric, Eric kind of shakes his head. He says, I, I wasn't expecting that, but it does kind of confirm my theory a little bit. What were I, you? expecting eric well i'm a meta psionicist i don't know if you know what that means but i can reach out to other psionics and i can see into their minds i can manipulate their psychic capabilities i thought maybe if i use the crystal which has a natural amplification um effect I thought maybe if I reached out to you with my metasionics, I could actually get through to Piani, wherever she is, since you two seem to be molecularly related. I think it worked, but differently. I have, I have no talent for precognition, but I think I had a precognitive vision. I don't think I would have had it if Piani weren't connected somehow. It wasn't pleasant. But you believe this confirms what you think about two of me, us? Well, I was reaching for you, and there's nobody else here. I was reaching through the crystal, and I saw a vision like Piani had. It must be you connected to Piani. There's no other explanation. I mean, there's a part of me that's like, well, duh, we look exactly alike. Of course, we're connected <laughs> in some way. But I suppose, like, internally, I, I'm sort of like, you know, if yeah. this is what you needed to confirm, yeah, what I does mean, it mean, though, Eric? Well, you, science requires a lot of data points in order to support any hypothesis. Right now, our working theory is that you and Piani are some sort of universally entangled quantum psychic link. We're gathering evidence that supports that. And then when we get to Kamna, we'll be able to perform some tests, perhaps retrace the quantum entanglement between the two of you and reverse the spin. Have you spoken to the captain about this? Yes. I think he understands what needs to happen. I don't know how enthusiastic he is about it, but Mr. Higgins is very different since losing Piani. I think he cared about her more than he's willing to admit. Well, then I assume he would want to pursue your theory. I think he does. Thank you, Kia. I think, I think that's all we can do for now. Fine, I'll continue studying my texts. Okay, yeah, I, I like pff, unhinge the Insta panel and pack it back away in my locker or something like that, and then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Alpharius, you um, you return to the ship uh, after your your errand. Um, Higgs, do you have anything that you're doing while while Alpharius is off the ship and um, these two are doing their experiment? No, not really. Yeah, I'm just getting ready to go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm like figuring out the navigational charts to to get to where sure. I need to go and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, updating your charts and stuff. Okay. So when uh yeah, when Alpharius, when you get back, um mm. uh yeah, I think that you you walk in on um Cameron and uh Kia like having a conversation. So Cameron, uh, Cameron is saying to you, like Kia, well, we can have the beginning of this conversation, but he's uh, the two of you are talking, and he uh, he's like, well, what, what do you what do you mean you're you're leaving the planet with these folks? I I mean, I, I don't think Vito's gonna like that very much, and, and there's there's things to do here. 
Plus, if these folks are syndicate assassins, like he said, well, well I, you ain't coming back. What am I? What am I supposed to sell, tell Brother Butler about this? Everyone's gonna have questions, and now what? I gotta, I gotta answer them. I will send back a message that you can take with you, but I believe that everyone will understand if I say this is for a greater purpose. And he, and he looks at the floor and nods, and he's like, "Well, I mean, I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but." I'm going to worry about you and I hope you'll, you know, let me know when you get wherever it is you're going so I can tell everyone what's up. I suspect that you all will and I will be in communication the entire time. It won't be long. I will return, but you realize I wouldn't make this decision unless I truly felt it was important. He, um, yeah, he nods sort of uncertainly. And then, yeah, Alfarius, you uh, you come in. I just kind of come in, look around, see things are, I guess, fairly normal, and I go to put my rifle in its locker and stuff. Yeah, and I think as you walk by Cameron, he, he like kind of like stands kind of in front of you, so you have to like slow down, and he like puts his hand on your shoulder, and he's like, you take care of her, you cyborg you. And he like wipes the tear out of his eye. Cameron, I don't understand. What is the problem? It's like, what do you mean you don't understand? I just, he like looks over his shoulder at Key. It's like, I just, I hate to see her go. And well, space is so dangerous and all. Space is by definition, a lethal atmospheric place for human body. Yes, it's very dangerous. I don't understand. Or do you plan <laughs> on going into outer space without proper equipment? That would be ill-advised. Suicide, which, as I understand it, based off the readings of your teachings, would be bad for your your belief system. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think he just kind of starts to lose it. He's just like, uh, I I just oh I can't do this, and he like walks away so that you don't see him get all like choked up. Cameron, as I understand it, there are there are hotlines that have been around for literally thousands of years. Talk to someone. And I look at the brookie and I'm like, Pi, if you don't mind, please go communicate with that person for as long as they need. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so Pi, uh, Pi, like, says over the comms, like, um, hey, are you okay? Do you need someone to talk to? And Cameron's like, god dang, I'm not talking to no computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and so the two of them, I think, like, have this kind of, like, conversation <laughs> in the background. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so what, what, I guess, what preparations do you need to, to undertake before you, before you go anything or is this, or do you, uh, cut off I, I want to send a message to, um, the, uh, I forget her name. Now I'm blanking out the girl that we're yeah. here for, for the mission in the first oh, place. Rajani. Yeah. I sent a message to Rajani and I'm, <laughs> something came up. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, Hey, uh, it, it's a video thing. And it like clicks on. Like, oh, oh, yeah, the camera's up there. Hey, uh, you know, something came up. It's uh, it's your typical, you know, universe-ending bullshit. So <laughs> going to have to put the brakes on killing Vito and go take care of this. But uh, we'll be back in a bit. We'll let you know once Vito's been taken care of. And uh, I hope the date went well. I really do. <laughs> I hope Isn't someone awesome. on their way here as well? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, that, you they'll be notify, here in a bit. We can come back. Yeah, you notify them to like. Uh, do you want to notify them to wait there or like meet you on Comna? Uh, I mean, I guess I'll I'll say meet me on Comna. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you send a quick message there. All right. Cool. One so the, that Eric wants to do also. Okay, what's that? Which is, he's hoping that he knows someone within the Caliphate who can get him access to Comna without. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's. Barzun. Yeah, I think that's where we'll we'll start uh, for the next episode. We'll start okay. you reaching out to your your extended network. Cool. Um, so so we see uh, we see Cameron teary eyed standing on the on the the deck as the swan song like lifts it's off. Ricky patting his back. <laughs> there, 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 there. Um, but yeah, so he he kind of like waves as the ship flies up uh, out of the uh, out of the atmosphere, and as we as we pan up to the the darkness of space. 
um, we see uh, another short scene kind of at the, right at the end of the episode. Um, obviously, somewhere far away, there's a, a room. Um, it's a, a large sort of spherical room. Uh, there's a long metallic gangplank uh, leading up to uh, a huge silvery like sphere. And uh, we follow uh, what looks at first from a distance to be a woman in a um, like a long ornate uh, kind of Marie Antoinette looking like gown. But as we get closer, we realize like her movements uh, are kind of like stop motion-y. And we see uh, that she's, she's actually a, a, like an Android, that she has this like perfect sort of ceramic face and like fiber optic cables uh, for hair. And uh, she stops in front of this like massive sphere and as she does, uh, a hologram next to the sphere uh, appears. Um, and it's just like a, a sort of stylized eye, like a big stylized holographic eye. And so that appears and the, um, the sphere uh, takes the shape of a human face. And uh, the eye, from the eye, a, a voice emerges and it speaks in Arabic. So we, we don't understand it, but we get subtitles. Uh, and it just says, they're on their way. And the woman responds uh, in French, uh, speaking to the, the obviously the war mind, uh, she says, uh, "Then I suppose that our bet will be settled soon." And the war mind says, "Yes, sister, we will see." And it fades out on um, the planet Kamna, this sort of like crystalline kind of geode planet, uh, as we go to uh, go to credit. Yeah. Cool, cool. There you go. All right, let's do some shout outs to get out of here. Wheat, as usual, start us off. Yo, um, I'm actually doing something pretty cool this week. Uh, I've never been, but I'm going to St. Jude for the uh, summit. Mm. Nice. And we're doing a Twitch weekly from there. And uh, obviously, I've talked about and supported St. Jude enough, so I'm, I'm excited to go there. So that'll be Friday at 1 p.m. PT on – actually, I think the time moved. I think it's now 2 p.m. PT on slash twitch and we're going to be doing a show from there which should be pretty cool i'm looking forward to it other than that you know where to find me thanks to you guys it would have been great and uh i'll see you next time there you go steven some shout outs hello everybody so things are getting pretty interesting here on the song of swans um I don't think I'm doing anything too crazy these days. I'm, uh, I've decided to become a full-time Dwarf Fortress streamer, so you can watch me nice. play Dwarf Fortress on my stream. I heard about that. I'm, um, it's ridiculously fun. You should definitely come by and check it out. I don't know when the next stream is going to be. It might be Thursday or something like that. Anyway, why, have heard, why have I heard about Dwarf Fortress? What is that? It's the craziest Don't, Jeff, game. Jeff, no, Steven, do not explain <laughs> this. Jeff, do not ask what Dwarf Fortress is. Uh, oh, okay. Dwarf Fortress is like an RTS roguelike where you control seven dwarves and build a little fort. And it's Jeff, like an action top down crazy game. Jeff, but it, it's gotten to the point where it's like 47% of simulating what life yes, really yes, is simulating like. The, no. So there was, uh, this is a hilarious thing. So um, <gasps> the, the guy, Tarn Adams, the creator of Dwarf Fortress, was like, okay, what's going on with cats? Why are they like, like acting so erratically? So he debugged cats. And what was happening was cats would walk around. Um, and because he added like blood on the ground and tracking blood on the ground, um, cats would like walk through blood and track it places, but cats would also walk through alcohol or other liquids and it would get on their paws. And because it's on their paws, he was like, well, what do they do? They clean themselves to get it off. But of course, because they're cats, whatever they're cleaning off of themselves, they're also imbibing. And therefore what was happening was the cats were wandering around drunk. <laughs> because he was literally simulating all of those things accurately enough that the emergent behavior was that cats were getting drunk. So Jeff, yes. I just linked you an image of what Dwarf Fortress is. Well, and by yeah. default, Dwarf Fortress has no graphic UI, right? Like yeah, it's, it's right. terrible. Oh it's, Christ! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, that's Dwarf Fortress. It's a huge it's, ASCII mess. You're taking this Eric thing way too serious. <laughs> it is amazing, and you should follow me everywhere. Silent Osiris, the O's is zero to come see the ridiculousness. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's uh, that's Dwarf Fortress. It's a hell of a thing. Jeff, some shout outs, some thoughts. Holy cow. <laughs> I'm like a little bit, <laughs> a little Sorry, bit stunned yeah. right now. Fucked up. Uh, I'm like still trying to wrap my head around people doing that. I had a, I, well, real quick in the in the closing moments, I actually went and saw Batman vs. Superman with Day 9. 
nice. and I had a talk with him, and he's actually like right now super obsessed with this farming game that everyone's playing. Yep. Yeah, Stardew Valley. Start yeah, Valley. He's, he's pretty and into I, it. He, I was like, why? Like, why would you escape into an alternate reality where you live a mundane, boring, bad life? And he's like, he's like, I don't know, man. I just want to. I had to plant my carrots, and I had to negotiate a good rate with him. And I was like, what? <laughs> carrots. Fuck? That was. It wasn't an answer. Anyways. Have you have you heard of the VR game Job Simulator? No. You can you can like take your donuts off your desk and throw them on the ground. You can Maybe throw your father at your boss's head. Yeah, simulator, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean VR has an appeal to it. Like that's that I understand that. That's like yeah, but job but, simulator. Yeah, it's terrible, but I mean I, I get it. Like you're <laughs> you're doing something, but like a pixelated farm game where you're literally like, okay. Uh, anyways, it's obviously not for me. I just I didn't understand. Same and they look here. at Dwarf Fortress, and that's like staring into the abyss as well. Like I don't, same yeah. here. I don't get it. Um, thank you all for tuning in. I I am uh, again every week. I feel like I just I just have to like turn to my peers and, and Adam and just you guys make this so enjoyable. It's so fun. Uh, really excited about where the story is going and and the show. And just thank you all. Uh, tomorrow I leave for Emerald City Comic Con, where I will be working in the Twitch booth. Uh, stream alongside some other awesome people, including Future Man Gaming and, and a few others. And I'm really excited about that. Never done it before, uh, but I've watched a few, and I understand that I'm going to be able to interview some Seahawk players. I'm gonna. There's some guy from Boy Meets World that's going to be on there, which Anna asked me to make out with. Of course, I will not. Maybe some hand action. Who knows? Um, <laughs> thank you, Marcus. Good God, you guys. Oh, oh. stay away from the blowjob and hand job jokes with you all. Just <laughs> complete stonewall. They have been, uh, they've been exhausted. Um, anyways, I'll figure something else out, guys. I'll get some other jokes in there. Um, that's it for this this week. <laughs> that's it for this weekend. And then in the not too distant future, I'm going to be uh, leaving to go cast some poker. Actually, which I'm really excited about. Some literally professional poker. They're like, yeah, we want a gaming personality. Awesome. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll do that. And they're like, can you can you be funny and random? I'm like. I guess, and then uh, that's that's all I got to do. You should, you should just be like hand jobs and blowjob jokes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you I got to get those out of my system because yeah, it's what's you, that? You got to be the uh, the pootie pie of of poker casting where you just. Holy God. Although he he's a little bit uh, brash, you can't curse as much as he does in his videos. But yeah, no. just make a lot of random noises. <laughs> just literally like mumble to myself and go. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> like wow, you're a, you're a fucking flopped on us. Yeah, actually, yeah. no. The ratings have gone through the roof. We don't understand what he's saying, but it's fantastic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's really fun. So, of course, as always, I'll tweet, I'll tweet that out. Um, that's it. Thank you all. Cool stuff. Last but not least, Adam, some shout outs. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, it's been a it's been a good arc. We're gonna we're gonna make episode number fifty real special for you. So come on back hmm. for that. Uh, if you haven't yet, go watch the vods for Balance of Power. Because the first week will blow you away. Uh, we're gonna be doing that Sundays, so definitely check it out. It'll force push you away. Get That's immersed. Right. I'm sorry. God. It's true. Uh, Let me just I, say too. I, I played along with my character, and it is going <laughs> really weird. It's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, nobody has all kinds of friends and stuff, and they all talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to do reaction videos to the role play videos as if they were playing along. Yeah. I've chosen to roll real dice and write real paper too. It's really cool. <laughs> it's a great idea. I want that. I want that really bad. Um, yeah. So in the uh, in the interim, if you're looking for something to do during the week, uh, you can check me out twitch.tv slash Adam Coble. I'm gonna finish up Hyperlight Drifter this week, and then we're gonna play around with some roller coasters. So. Come check that out, and you can follow me on Twitter at Skinny Ghost. I put up the Q and A thread over on the subreddit. Go ask questions, and I will try to answer them to the best of my non-spoilery ability. We will see so you. So awesome! By the way, next time. I forgot one thing. I have been playing Battlefleet Gothic Armada. By the way, oh yeah, is How that is good? It? That's good? actually fun. Like Which it's fun? it's in, I've heard it's, it's uh, like it's Dreadnought, but Warhammer 40k yeah. and small. So uh, it's in pre-release right now. It comes out on the twenty first. Did, you, did very you ever play? Did you ever play Battlefield Gothic, like the tabletop one? No, I didn't. It's actually it's pretty fun. Like yeah. the tiny goth spaceships, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, people like it and stuff. But it's it's really fun because you'd cuss you like. Anyways, I think we should play it when it comes out on the twenty first. I think we'd have fun because I, I was I'm, in. I'm not very good at first, obviously, because it's actually there's kind of a big learning curve to it because the ships. Like, if you tell them to turn, they don't just immediately turn. It's not immediate control. They're like, here we fucking go. So it's like, whatever you tell them to do. It's like a thousand miles long. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's awesome. So I, <laughs> there's a couple times where I was just like, fuck it. And my whole fleet like boosted <laughs> forward and then rammed each other into asteroid belts and bounced off each other and just yeah, battle fleet, up. battle fleet, <laughs> battle fleet, Gothic Tokyo drift. The thing Dude. that sucks that that's going to suck for that game is that dreadnoughts actually, no, I can't even Never mind. <laughs> Scratch I was it. about I was about to really fuck up, and I I like had the mental <laughs> process of like I could say that. Wait a minute! In the email they said specifically oh. not to. <laughs> you know when Dreadnought comes nice. up. Yeah, I I played Dreadnought at a PAX. Captain, <laughs> Captain, it's an NDA on the horizon. <laughs> abort, abort. Yeah, whatever. JP, put me in your team when Dreadnought comes out. I want to play with you because that game is fucking hilariously fun. Yeah, oh, that game's my good times. God. That game's good times. I almost fucked that up. I kind of still did, but whatever. Uh, that's that. We'll do. I'll do my shoutouts afterwards. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Are we all good? Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. We'll be back next Tuesday for episode 50 of Roleplay Swan Song. We will see you guys then. We're out. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye say, it, say it again. Wait, I'm muted. Say it again. Bye. Peace. No, you, said, you said peace in your normal peace, and I muted halfway through it. Peace. That was a uh, fucking I'm out of here. All right. Just